This video shows a new procedure called the Deviation Dashboard that's been added to StatGraphic Centurion version 17. The Deviation Dashboard is used to display and monitor multiple time series data. There are two basic formats, colored bars and connected line plots. Since the Deviation Dashboard is a statlet, dynamic controls let analysts view how the time series have evolved over time. This screen shows a typical data file called the Gulf of Maine that's supplied with version 17. It contains fish counts at 13 locations in the Gulf of Maine taken between 1963 and 2003. Note that the file consists of a single column called year which gives the value associated with each time period, and additional columns for each of the locations at which data is collected. Our task is to take this data and display it in such a way that we can see any unusual patterns that exist. Before we plot the data, we're going to do some simple computations. The data consists of measurements for m variables over n time periods. Let's let y sub jt be the value of variable j at time t. What we're going to do is standardize each variable to form deviations. We'll do that by taking the values, subtracting the estimated mean of the associated variable, and dividing by the estimated standard deviation. These z-scores represent the deviations of each value from its respective mean in units of its standard deviation. I'm now going to do a demo of the deviation dashboard. Here's the main window of version 17 and I've loaded the Gulf of Maine data set into the data sheet. You'll see one column with the years and 13 columns containing the fish counts. To run the deviation dashboard, I'll select Statlets from the main menu and then Deviation Dashboard. On the Data Input dialog box, I'll take the 13 columns with the fish counts and put them in the data field, then take the column called Year and put it in the field called Time. If I wanted to, I could supply values for the means and standard deviations. Otherwise, the program will calculate them from the columns of data. When I press OK, the deviation dashboard will be loaded into the main window. The first thing I want to do is clean up the graph a little bit, since the text is too big. On the version 17 analysis toolbar, there's a slider that I can click to reduce the text font. I can also set the rotation of the X labels to be vertical, and then slide the graph up so that everything fits nicely. Initially, the deviation dashboard shows the data for 1963. Each bar represents how many standard deviations a particular time series was away from its mean in 1963. If the deviation is less than one standard deviation from the mean, the bar is colored dark green. If the deviation is between one and two standard deviations, the bar is light green. You'll also see yellow bars if deviations are between two and three standard deviations. And if any deviation is outside the three sigma limits, the bar will be colored red. I can use the slider on the toolbar to change the year for which the bars are displayed. You can see changes over time as I move the slider you'll notice in some cases, at some time periods, there were certain time series which were beyond the three sigma limits. I can also bring time back to 1963 and press the right arrow to let time evolve dynamically. You'll see it ends in 2003. There's a second format for the deviation dashboard that I can display 
if I click the right mouse button and select Analysis Options. It's the connected line chart, which displays each time series as a connected set of points. Here you can see that for most of the time period, all of the series remained within their three sigma limits, except there were a few years during the late 1970s when several of the locations had fish counts well above the upper three sigma limits. Again, I can bring the slider back to 1963 and you can see how the time series evolved. This can be used to plot historical data such as fish counts in the Gulf of Maine can also be used as a multivariate control chart. There's a technical note I need to make about the method for estimating the means and standard deviations of each of the time series. There are three methods. The first is to use the sample mean and standard deviation of each time series over the entire sampling period. This is the method we used here, which is called the long-term method on the Analysis Options dialog box. There's also a short-term method, method 2, which uses the sample mean, but instead estimates the standard deviation of each time series from its average moving range. This would be the manner in which the standard deviation would be estimated in an individual's control chart if you selected an initial study. The third approach would be to specify external values that come from outside the data. This is what's done in our SPC section if you do a control to standard control chart. You'll recall that there are fields on the data input dialog box for the deviation dashboard where you can specify columns containing the means and standard deviations of each time series. I hope you've enjoyed this demo of the deviation dashboard. When you get a chance to use it, drop us a line and let us know how well it works for you.